Hey, all right, glad to be with you. Going through the Bible in a year, Tuesday, October 3rd. We'll dig into the God's Word together. Our readings for today are Song of Songs, uh, chapters 3 and 4. And um, we're also in Zechariah chapters 5 and 6. So we are going to be in um, Zechariah chapters 5 and 6. And I got the sun kind of coming through here. We'll see. I don't have much time until the sun probably overtakes the video. So we'll jump right into it. So um, God, I just asked, Lord, that you bless the study of your word this morning. Thank you, Lord, for the sun today. Um, thank you, Lord, for another day. As I hear, hear life all around me, Lord, birds chirping, animals going, um, Father reminds us, Lord, that you are life, Lord. And so as we engage and study with your word, help your life to continue to arise and pour out from us into others, Lord. So to your glory, Lord, may we better understand your word and live it out. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, Zachariah. So who is Zachariah? That's the question you really want to start with. Um, Zachariah. So we'll just give you the context real quick. As you've been studying through the Bible in a year, all these minor prophets uh, have been on the scene because um, God um, is going to will be removing Israel from their land. He's also going to end up bringing them back. And so Zechariah is one of the prophets that is uh, present and there. Haggai is another one that's with him. And this occurs in the book of Ezra. Um, God is bringing back the Israelites to the time of judgment, the 70 years where they'd be away. That's gone. Um, that has happened. And so God is going to use Ezra and Zerubbabel and bring his people back into the land. And one of the things that they're going to do first is when they get back in the land, they're going to set up their temple where they would worship. And so that's that's a big part of their life. That's um, a central place of their life. That's where they would carry out much of the uh, the law, the Mosaic law that God had given to them. So they need that because it had been destroyed. And so the people are rebuilding it. And Ezra is a big part of that. And he's really leading the way, making sure that happens. And two prophets who are acting basically like just the word of the Lord as they're there uh, are coming from Zechariah and coming from Haggai. And so Zechariah and Haggai are just speaking um, the Lord's truth, encouraging, ministering to, warning um, God's people as they're building this up and they're looking to settle again. Uh, there's a lot of things that God is uh, addressing and talking about. Uh, one of them is certainly encouraging the rebuilding of the wall because they could get discouraged and it wasn't easy and there's a lot of challenges. Also, they're tempted to go back into the old ways of sin that really got them kicked out to begin with. Another interesting thing that comes up is that God during this time as he's speaking to Zach Zachariah and Haggai, mostly Zachariah, um, God is actually speaking a lot about what's going to happen in the future. So far into the future, like end times things, like the things in the book of Revelation, uh, things like what we call the day of the Lord or the time of the tribulation that's going to happen, depending upon how people talk about their biblical prophecy. Um, my belief is that the rapture happens and then uh, the rapture, meaning Jesus comes back, meets with his people in the sky. Uh, they meet with him in the sky and then they go to be with him. And then there's this time called the time of tribulation or the day of the Lord that plays out where you have the emergence of the Antichrist. You have the emergence um, of the false prophet. All these judgments from heaven are being poured out on the earth. And during that time, there'll be the greatest revival ever. It's going to be a horrific time for the earth. And this is what I think when Jesus talked about, it's a horrible time to be alive. And what a bad time for uh, moms to be pregnant and for families to be around. It's going to be horrific. A lot of tragic things are going to take place because the Lord's judgment is going to be poured out on the earth. And, um, and during this time, Zachariah is actually speaking to certain things that will be happening during that time. So as Zachariah is talking about his present time where they're being uh, established and uh, set up back into the place where they're from. He also starts to, by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, he also starts to speak to the, um, 
the reestablishing of God's people in a future sense, even after the, the, the tribulation. And he speaks to things happening during that time. It's pretty amazing. Um, I'd love to have the conversation. Maybe you would too with Zachariah and say, hey man, like, did you know what you're writing about? Did you have any sense of, of what was going on? And chances are he did because he was writing under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, the direction of the Holy Spirit. And so in chapters five and six here, uh, we see a little bit about God's judgment and what's going to be happening later. Uh, so let's pick up. We'll read through Zechariah 5 verse 1. <clears throat> and he says, uh, I looked again and there before me was a flying scroll. He asked me, he said, what do you see? I answered, I see a flying scroll, 30 feet long, 15 feet wide. Pretty large scroll. And he said to me, this is the curse that's going out over the whole land. For according to what it says on one side, every thief will be banished. And according to what it says on the other, everyone who swears falsely will be banished. The Lord Almighty declares, I'll send it out. And it will enter the house of the thief and the house of him who swears falsely by my name. I will remain in his house and destroy it, both its timbers and its stones. And I'll talk about this in a minute. Then the angel who was speaking to me came forward and said to him, Look up and see what this is that is appearing. And I asked, What is it? He replied, It's a measuring basket. Um, and he added, This is the iniquity or the sin of the people or the appearance of the people throughout the land. Then the cover of uh, lead was raised and there in the basket sat a woman. He said, this is wickedness. And he pushed her back into the basket and pushed the lead cover down over its mouth. Then I looked up and there before me were two women with the wind in their wings. They had wings like those of a stork. They lifted up the basket between heaven and earth. Where are they taking the basket? I asked the angel who was speaking to me. He replied to the country of Babylonia or Shinar to build a house for it. When it is ready, the basket will be set there in its place. So we have these two strange imageries. It's, it's continuing. Um, Zechariah is receiving these imageries. There is one already in Zechariah chapter 4 about a gold lampstand to olive trees. And now we get this imagery about this flying scroll which basically had, um, like it says over here, curses, judgments on the land. <laughs> this other weird imagery, this woman in a basket. It's not a specific woman of any kind in history. It's not, you know, some woman. It's just a metaphor um, that there's this woman in this basket and uh, she's like representing wickedness that's going to eventually be poured out on the land. So again, there's these things happening in the future where there's judgment and judgment in regards to wickedness and evil and God's going to deal with it. And it's not going to happen in Zachariah's time. It's going to happen at a later time. Chapter 6, verse 1, it says, I looked up again, and there before me were four chariots coming out be from between two mountains, mountains of bronze. Again, there's no mountains of bronze. Those don't exist. These are metaphors um, of, of judgment that's going to play out. The first chariot had red horses, the second black, the third white, and the fourth uh, dappled or spotted. All of them powerful. I asked the angel who was speaking to me, what are these, my Lord? And the angel answered me, these are the four spirits or the four winds of heaven going out from standing in the presence of the Lord of the whole world. <coughs> the one with the black horses is going toward the north country. The one with the white horses toward the west. And the one with the spotted horses toward the south. Notice nothing said about the red um, when the powerful horses went out, they were straining to go throughout the earth. And he said, so these horses go out, they represent the four spirits or four winds of heaven. And again, these horses, um, indicating judgment. Um, there is, uh, in Revelation, uh, a passage there that speaks and references, um, these horses, um, going out. And it says here, uh, when the powerful horses went out, they were straining. So it was difficult for them to go out through the earth. Verse eight, then he called to me, look, these going toward the north country have given uh, my spirit rest in the land of the north. <coughs> so he's seeing these amazing things from the Lord. This angel is giving him some explanation, but as you can tell, it's not explaining everything that's going on. 
And so uh, there's going to be a time, right, where these things are taking place, where evil and judgment are happening all over the entire globe, north, west, south, east, everywhere. And um, God, there's going to be um, ministering spirits and, and angels that are leaving the presence of God to carry out the judgment of God here on earth. And Zachariah is getting a glimpse into that. He's seeing part of this. And the obvious question, one of the obvious questions is like, why is the Lord doing this? Why is he giving um, him these visions and these insights and not really giving all of the details, all the explanations? And, uh, you know, I don't know. I don't know. This is what God's doing. But we do know part of the answer. Part of the answer is, is that uh, because God plans on judging and dealing with the earth and its sin, he plans on dealing with the enemy, um, and he's really going to do it. It's not just someday far off that will never happen and it's just something we talk about. God plans on doing it. And, wow, an acorn just came flying down here. Um, and there's multiple, multiple, multiple biblical uh, places in the Bible that refer and speak to this judgment coming up. And it's interesting that all these other places throughout Scripture, places like Daniel, like Ezekiel, obviously like Revelation, 1 Thessalonians, all these different places of biblical prophecy, they all speak to the judgment. And when you read through them, it's amazing how similar they are, how they describe the same kind of details. And what's interesting about that is the people that wrote these in different parts throughout the Bible, they were never alive at the same time together. They weren't even from the same place of the globe geographically. So it's incredible that you have these different people that are alive at different times recording the same kinds of things. And all that speaks to is the Lord speaking and ministering to different people, saying, hey, this is, these are some things of what's coming. God is also speaking to what's presently happening in these people's lives, like we're reading about right now, but he's also speaking about what's going to happen in the future. Got this crow loud over here. Maybe he's competing with us. Maybe he's saying amen. I don't know what he's doing. So verse 9 of chapter 6, it says, The word of the Lord came to me. Take silver and gold from the exiles, Heldai, Tobijah, Jediah, who have arrived from Babylon. Go the same day to the house of Josiah, son of Zephaniah. Take the silver and gold and make a crown and set it on the head of the high priest, Joshua, son of Jehozadak. So Joshua at this time is like the high priest of the exiles that are there that are rebuilding the temple. Um, pretty amazing story with him in um, Zechariah chapter 2 or 3 there um, where he has this amazing experience before the Lord and God has uh, gives him uh, this clean clothing where he was dirty previously and the enemy is like accusing him that he's not worthy to be um, used before the Israelites and God does this amazing thing to make him worthy. It's pretty cool earlier on in the book of Zechariah. If you've been reading through the Bible in a year, you would have read that. So um, God speaks to Zechariah. He says, hey, uh, go to these guys, specifically Heldai, Tobijai, Jedi, uh, get this silver and gold, uh, melt it down, make a crown. And in verse 12, it says, tell him, this is what the Lord Almighty says, here is the man whose name is the branch. He will branch out from his place and build the temple of the Lord. It is he who will build the temple of the Lord and he will be clothed with majesty and will sit and rule on his throne and he will be a priest on his throne and there will be harmony between the two. <coughs> the crown will be given to Heldai, um, Tobijah, Jediah, and Hen as a memorial in the temple of the Lord. Those who are far away will come and help to build the temple of the Lord. And you will know that the Lord Almighty has sent me to you. This will happen if you diligently obey the Lord your God. So in other words, he's saying, hey, listen, um, Joshua is, is the man leading um, spiritually here that I've anointed to be the uh, mediator between me and the people. <coughs> I'm going to put a crown on his head so people can visually see that I am with him. I'm also going to be with him and with the people and establish what I'm doing here. It's going to be me doing it, um, but I'm going to be using Joshua. So go get that silver and gold, make it into a crown, uh, diligently seek me, and you're going to experience, um, and sorry, mosquito there, you're going to experience 
and uh, see that I'm going to set you up and establish you. So really interesting um, chapters in the book of Zechariah here to see like what's going on and what the Lord is doing. Uh, in chapter 7, it's going to change gears a little bit, and God is going to speak to them about their traditions. They haven't been in the land long, actually, and as they're rebuilding the temple, they're asking God some questions. And God's saying, well, you know, like, don't just do these things because they're traditions. You know, like, you want to be doing these things for the right reasons, that you're really feeling led in that way. Um, so that's later in chapter 7. So if I could give some kind of concluding thoughts or remarks um, <clears throat> on these amazing visions and the situation of having Zechariah, he's like this angel's walking with him and showing these things and explaining a little bit about what he's seeing. That's amazing. I mean, what an experience. Um, what I could say is this, um, what he's seeing, what he's experiencing shows and proves the fact that God is going to deal and judge with sin. He's going to deal with it. There's going to be judgment that awaits the world. That's going to happen. Uh, we're all going to stand before God at some point. Um, if you believe that the rapture happens and that it exists, uh, which I do, I think the Bible points to it. Most people just really debate upon when it's going to happen. Um, that means that um, depending upon what your theology is, that either, uh, no matter what, there will be humans on the planet here that are going to be alive during the horrific time period of the tribulation <coughs> where God is going to remove his covering and there's going to be all kinds of calamities and horrible things that take place on this earth. And he, uh, the enemy himself is going to be incarnate like Jesus did. Um, he took on human flesh. The devil's going to take on human flesh. He's going to have amazing power. He's going to deceive the world. And these things are going to happen. Um, this is this is part of the divine outline. We can fight against it all we want, but this is what's going to happen. And I guess the encouragement and the warning is, in light of these things happening and taking place, number one, these things are happening because of sin in the world. That's why they're happening, because sin is here. <clears throat> and it's running rampant, and the enemy is inflaming all of it and making it worse and trying to make sure that people live under the, the, the uh, deception of sin, the illusion of sin, under the penalty of sin, under the uh, oppression of sin. And it's our job um, as believers and Christ followers to let people know, hey, listen, we don't, we don't have to live under that penalty and power. Or some people don't know, be like, listen, there's a real penalty for sin. Sin is a real thing. And it has people, it's deceives people, it's blinding people. It might even be blinding you. And so, um, right, we're called to share the truth of what's happening. And we're also called to share and live out the good news. And so hopefully we can be found guilty of that. Hopefully we can be found guilty of actually literally sharing and speaking to people when given the opportunity um, that Jesus Christ is the answer and that he actually really is good news. And um, it's not necessarily just about a particular church. It's not about an institution of religion. It's about the reality that God is real, um, that he is really going to deal with sin, that he has really provided a way to be spared from his judgment. And uh, I would assume if we have a heart for people, uh, that we want to share and that if we've really been impacted by the love of God, the grace of God, we would also want to share. So however you can share, look for ways to do it. Um, do it in love, uh, with grace and mercy, like Paul says, seasoned with salt. And um, don't look to fight against, uh, you know, his, his judgment, what God's going to do here on this planet. It's going to happen. And... Uh, it's not a reason to uh, maybe want to run and hide or be depressed or or it, the world is supposed to change and things are going to happen. And, and I don't think that that means, you know, we just let evil advance. We don't pray against it, that we don't, um, you know, take our stand in the light. We should. We absolutely should. But we're, we're just getting a warning sign that as we're faithful before him and as we are praying and standing in truth, that um, some pretty horrific things are going to happen and take place. And, and that's the plan. That's the plan. 
um, but there is an answer and there is hope found in Jesus Christ. And so it's important that whatever, in whatever way we can do that, that we spread uh, that truth, that we spread the good news, that we let people know, and that our lives really reflect that we're not just traditional, that we're not just religious, that we don't just go to church, that God is actually real, that he's real. And, and it's important that we spend time with him, that we hear his voice, and that we live a life led by his Holy Spirit, and that we don't let our flesh and our emotions, you know, call the shots, uh, but we let him call the shots and we allow him to humble us uh, and to test us in position where we need to be. So that's a long bottom line, but all of these things are in play. They're all happening. And so uh, let me close this up in prayer. Hopefully you finish up this book of Zechariah. As you're reading through the book of Song of Songs, it's an interesting book um, about romance, about love. And um, we'll spend some time, I think, let me see. I'm pretty sure we'll be able to spend some time in that. Oh, maybe we'll miss it. Yeah, we might miss it. So spend some, it's a short book. And because we only do these on Tuesdays and Thursdays, we might not get to that. So. Um, yeah, spend some time in there and, and, and check that out. It's a pretty interesting, pretty graphic book, book actually, about uh, love and sexuality and uh, yeah, pretty interesting stuff there. So let me close up in prayer. So Father, I thank you for your word, Lord. Um, I also thank you for your judgment. I'm glad that, that sin and evil is going to have to answer to you and that eventually there will be a day where it just has to cease and stop. And uh, Lord, I am also grateful, Lord, that you have rescued us and saved us and that you're available to any, to any that would choose to call on you. And so I just pray for your name and your truth to continue to go out from your people. And um, Lord, use us on your behalf for your glory to tell people about the truth, to love them with your love, Lord, to manifest your presence. Um, show us how to do these things, Lord. And many of the questions we probably won't have answers to, but may we be able to give them you, the person of you, Lord, the reality of you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so God bless you guys uh, this Tuesday. Hope you get a chance to enjoy it. And God willing, we'll be together again on Thursday.